I'm Will, Will Schwalbe, and uh, I'm the author of a book called The End of Your Life Book Club. Very early in, in, in mom's illness, I think it was one of her doctors uh, told her about a book called The Etiquette of Illness. And it's really about what to say when you're not sure you have the words and how to treat people and how to behave around this, this ominous subject. Um, at first, it was funny, I was very resistant, a little resistant to the book at first. I thought, oh, common sense will guide me. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think I need a book like this. But actually, when I read the first paragraph, I realized, of course I need this book, that there is an etiquette to illness, and there's no reason why you should know it if you haven't been through it, but there's really no excuse not to be open to learning it. The book started with a really simple suggestion, which is to say to someone who's ill, not, how are you feeling, but simply to say, do you want to talk about how you're feeling? Some days, yeah, I would like to talk about how I'm feeling. Some days, someone's talked too much about how they're feeling. They don't want to. They want to talk about anything else. Um, but by asking that question, it's not an intrusive question. It, it, it leaves them in control of, of the answer. When I think back on the times I had with my mother, on one hand, you know, there I'm sitting around with her. She's having chemo. She has a disease which is almost always fatal. Um, she knows in her case it will be fatal. She's not feeling great, and yet we had these wonderful, wonderful times. We had great conversations. Um, and I think back incredibly fondly on those times. Um, and I, I would wish them for everybody. I would wish for everybody the kind of conversations I had with my mother. The thing she said more than she said anything else was, we are so lucky, aren't we lucky, I'm so lucky. She said this as long as I can remember when I was growing up. She said it after she was diagnosed and she said it literally in the days leading up to her death. And she believed it fervently. Um, for her, what it really meant was, aren't I lucky to have had such a wonderful full life? Aren't I lucky to have three adult children? Aren't I lucky to have a husband for almost 50 years? Aren't I lucky to have a grandchild? Aren't I lucky not to be a refugee? Uh, aren't I lucky to have the best medical care in the world and, and to have insurance that's able to afford it? And that's what she focused on. And uh, she was constantly mindful of it. And at one time during her illness, uh, Randy Pausch's book came out um, about his pancreatic cancer and, and his journey, the last lecture. Um, and I gave it to mom to read, and I was, I was a little worried about it. I sort of left it on a table for her to read because I, I thought it might be a little too intense. Um, and she finished the book, and she said, aren't I lucky? And I said, well, mom, you, you have exactly, exactly the same illness that Randy Pausch has. And she said, yeah, but he'll never see his children grow up, and he'll never have grandchildren. There was something that happened while I was writing this book, which is people would say to me, oh, how great. You've written this book because you will have closure. And I would always pause and say, I actually really don't want closure. What I want to do is continue the conversation. And the, the metaphor that, that instantly sprung to mind was, for example, when I read David Copperfield. I think I was 16 years old. I closed the last page, tears streaming down my face. I loved that book. But that wasn't the end of my conversation with David Copperfield. That was kind of the beginning. I mean, I've been talking to David Copperfield ever since. Uh, and I love talking about my mother. It, it keeps her with me. And I see no reason not to.